Between 1995 and 1998, 25 young people in Great Britain developed some unusual symptoms. They had difficulty standing, walking and feeding themselves. They also experienced severe memory loss. Most died within a year of developing symptoms. Medical investigators searched for clues. What was causing these deaths? And were they somehow related? Devizes, England, dates back to the 17th century. About two hours west of London, the town is surrounded by lush farmland. Cattle and sheep graze peacefully in nearby fields. Stephen Churchill lived in Devizes with his parents and his sister Helen. Stephen was a normal teenager, active, fun-loving, a good student. Stephen was a typical British schoolboy. The days were never long enough. He had lots of friends. He was in the air training corps. And he liked school. He liked sports. And life was just very busy for Stephen. Stephen Churchill set high goals for himself and planned to join the Royal Air Force. But in July of 1994, he began to show signs of depression. He was distracted, confused, and had problems remembering things. By autumn, when Stephen was 18 years old, his grades began to fall. We got a phone call from the school in mid-November saying that Stephen had been to see the headmaster and that he was leaving school and that we had given him permission to do this and we didn't know anything about it. In fact, I thought they were talking about another boy altogether. When Stephen returned home from school, his doctor prescribed antidepressant medication, but his condition worsened. It started off with hand and eye coordination. He would reach out to pick up a, a cup or a mug and miss it completely, but continue with the action as though he had picked it up and put something that was, wasn't there to his lips. He started to have hallucinations, nightmares, um, he just sat and watched the television, became very frightened of cartoons on the television, things that weren't frightening at all. He thought he was there in the cartoon. His parents were alarmed, and they quickly took Stephen to a London hospital. He couldn't walk, he couldn't feed himself, couldn't wash himself, nothing. Tests for virtually every medical possibility were all negative, and doctors were baffled. They concluded that Stephen had some sort of progressive neurological illness of unknown origin. On May 21st, 1995, Stephen Churchill died. He was 19 years old. In the midst of their grief, the Churchills were shocked when they heard the results of their son's autopsy. Stephen had died of Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, or CJD. It's an extremely rare disease that causes tiny holes to form in the brain. It usually strikes the elderly and is always fatal. Stephen Churchill was one of the youngest known victims of the disease. We couldn't understand why a young boy who'd been fit and well had died of a disease of the elderly. It just didn't make sense. And it didn't make sense to medical investigators. When Stephen Churchill died of CJD, a neurological illness which usually strikes the elderly, doctors were alarmed. Not long afterwards in London, a 16-year-old girl developed the same symptoms. And there was a similar case about a hundred miles away in Harpenden. Mike and Penny Sinnott's daughter started to behave differently. 22-year-old Nina was a beautiful, vivacious young woman who had just graduated from Manchester University. She had one of these smiles that would go from ear to ear when she, she laughed. 
Shortly after graduation, Nina displayed signs of depression. That was certainly not like Nina. And I think it's at that stage we realized that perhaps there was something not uh, normal with Nina itself. She would start to forget things, forget who'd phoned, forget where she'd written things down. Nina's physical condition also deteriorated and she underwent tests at the Royal Free Hospital in London. One day I put my head round the door of one of the doctors and just said, I know that Nina's had a lot of tests. Have you had any results back yet? Um, he said, well, everything's negative. There's nothing that's come up positive. And, and I said, well, what does that mean? What do you think it is? And he said, well, he said, he said we're looking at, could, could probably be CJD, AIDS we're talking about. And I hadn't actually been, pre been prepared for that at that time. Sat down and said, are you telling me that my daughter's going to die? And he said, well, probably yes. Well, I do recall one day when it w I was nursing her at home and she turned to me uh, and just said, Dad, I'm going to die, am not I? How the hell do you tell your child that? Answer that question to your child. Nine months after first developing symptoms, Nina died. It was the bravery of Nina, and she tried to maintain a, a smile through it all. I think that's the memory that lives with me. Since Nina's doctors suspected that she might have died of CJD, her brain tissue, along with Stephen Churchill's, were sent here to the CJD surveillance unit in Edinburgh, Scotland. Well, I saw something different down the microscope. Uh, it was very striking and, and very surprising, and then I immediately began to think of why is this different? Have I missed this before? Have I not noticed it before? Dr. Ironside had examined over 200 cases of CJD, but he'd never seen anything like this before. These brain samples were filled with plaque or fatty deposits, and the brain tissue surrounding the plaque was almost completely destroyed. One of Dr. Ironside's colleagues called the slides the most terrifying thing he had ever seen. Dr. Ironside noticed cellular changes in the brain, which meant this was a new form of CJD, one they called new variant CJD, but they weren't sure what caused it. Within months, there were even more cases. The CJD surveillance unit interviewed all of the victims' families using a 22-page questionnaire. They asked about diet, travel habits, occupation, anything that might shed some light on this new illness. According to the survey, all were young and fell ill within a short time of one another. They were from all over Great Britain and not clustered in any one geographic location. For most, the first symptoms included depression and memory loss. Can you tell me what this is? I don't know. The patients had difficulty walking, standing, and even feeding themselves. It's a ghastly illness. It's, it's absolutely horrific. I think it, it's extremely difficult for families to watch someone that they love going through this. It, it, it's a very brutal illness. Scientists realized that the physical symptoms of new variant CJD were similar to a disease which was striking cows in Great Britain. Farmers called it mad cow disease. The medical term is bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or BSE. It's a fatal disease that first broke out on this farm in England in 1985. Scientists don't know what's causing it or where it came from, but they are worried. The cattle are hyper excitable. They react more strongly to light and sound than sudden movements where they'll become more in a panic stage. They too have trouble getting up, have difficulty walking and placing their feet. The brains of cows with BSE were riddled with tiny holes like a sponge, identical to the brain tissue of Stephen Churchill, Nina Cadwallader, and the other victims. But what caused mad cow disease? And could it have jumped species from cows to humans? 
a grisly clue lay thousands of miles away on an island in the Pacific Ocean. In the 1950s in New Guinea, there was an outbreak of an illness in the Foray tribe similar to CJD. Members of the tribe called it Kuru. Kuru in the native language of the group in New Guinea that suffered from this disease means fright or shivering. Kuru victims became uncoordinated, staggered, and eventually lost the ability to walk or stand. They usually died within nine months. Scientists believe Kuru was transmitted when the tribe ate the infected brains of their dead relatives during funeral rituals. The infectious agent is all over the body, inside, but primarily in the highest amounts in the brain and brain was among the organs uh, that were eaten. The outbreak of Kuru stopped when the practice of cannibalism was halted in the 1960s. But what did cannibalism have to do with mad cow disease in Britain three decades later? During that time, cows in Britain were undergoing a change in diet. They had been herbivores feeding on grass and grains. But over time, their diets were supplemented with scrap remains of slaughtered sheep and other cows. With this new diet, the cows not only turned into carnivores or meat eaters, they became cannibals like the Foray tribe. And scientists suspect that cows were eating the remains of sheep that had a form of spongiform encephalopathy called scrapie. Scrapie has been known for about 250 years in the world and it got the name from them rubbing. They think that they're itching, that they have itch sensations, and so they rub along fence or fix objects. The theory goes that after cows ate the scrapie infected sheep, they developed their own form of spongiform encephalopathy called BSE or mad cow disease. And this was passed on over time as more infected sheep and cow remains were fed back to cows. So you had this recycling of cattle carcasses as well as the scrapie infected sheep carcasses which amplified the amount of infectivity and the epidemic took off. The British government outlawed the practice of feeding most sheep and cow remains to cows in 1988 but not before millions of pounds of contaminated meat had entered the food chain. If this infection jumps species once again, from cows to humans, scientists feared the country would be on the brink of a new and terrifying plague. By 1997, there were 21 confirmed cases of new variant CJD in young people throughout Britain. Scientists wondered whether meat from cows infected with mad cow disease killed Stephen Churchill. Nina Cadwallader and the other 19 cases. Had this form of spongiform encephalopathy in essence jumped species from sheep to cows and from cows to humans? There exists a biological species barrier which makes it difficult for a disease to jump species but large amounts of an infectious agent can overcome that species barrier. The amount of infection that is needed to um, produce a disease when you cross species is much greater than uh, the amount that you need when you um, transmit within a species. One clue that this was a possibility came in the 1980s when cats and some other zoo animals in Britain developed spongiform encephalopathy, presumably from eating pet food made from infected cow parts. This seemed to be another example of BSE uh, crossing the species and going into uh, another type of mammal. Uh, obviously cats not the same as a, uh, as a human, but if it can go from cow to cat, um, why not from cow to human? But what was the infectious agent causing these diseases? Scrapie in sheep, mad cow disease, kuru and CJD in humans, all are what are called prion diseases. Prions are proteins which exist in the brain. 
One theory is that rogue or damaged prions from the brains of infected cows make their way into a human's brain after ingesting contaminated meat where they come into contact with healthy prions. These rogue prions then damage the healthy prions, causing the holes and sponge-like appearance in the brains of victims of new variant CJD. But this is just a theory. If it's correct, it explains why cooking does not eliminate the problem. Prions are virtually indestructible and remain in contaminated meat even after it's been cooked in high temperatures. Not even radiation can kill them. But not all medical researchers agree. Some think it may be a virus or something similar. If it is any type of virus, it's for sure different from any other virus that, that we know about. Uh, people have looked for viruses, nucleic acid, for many, many years, and, and none has ever been demonstrated. To see if mad cow disease could jump species, Dr. Maura Bruce conducted an experiment. She took two groups of mice and injected the first group with brain tissue from victims of new variant CJD. The second group was infected with tissue taken directly from cows with BSE, or mad cow disease. After death, the tissue in their brains were analyzed. We saw a very similar pattern of disease in these mice to the one that we'd previously seen uh, in mice infected with BSE from cattle. The demonstration that the same strain of agent was involved in new variant CJD and BSE strengthened the link between the two. The likelihood of a link between mad cow disease and new variant CJD in humans was finally established. Clearly it was very disturbing. If that were the case, it was quite likely that there would be more cases of this type of CJD linked to BSE and that might have major public health consequences. So clearly this was a very, very serious issue. But the question remained, how many others who ate contaminated meat in England were going to die? The Churchills learned the truth about what killed their son in an unfortunate way. They were watching a television broadcast from the House of Commons as a British health official announced to the world that their son had died from eating contaminated meat. The committee have concluded that the most likely explanation at present is that these cases are linked to exposure to BSE before the introduction of the specified bovine offal ban in 1989. Will the Secretary of State admit that it is his government's reckless disregard for public health and their dogma and their dogma of deregulation which has swept us into this crisis. The world just exploded. But for us, the world had exploded in a different way because we were hearing publicly on TV in our Houses of Parliament facts about our own son's death and we'd never been told. I mean, it was a disgraceful way to learn such personal information. The victim's parents couldn't help but wonder whether they too were at risk. And it was very difficult to understand as to why we had not contracted it and Nina had. And people are often very concerned because they say, well, our whole family ate the same thing. What are, what are the risks to my other children, my husband, that, that kind of thing? I, I'm not going to eat it until they have done something about it, something that reassures people enough mm. so, that they'll, so it's okay to eat it. We're all worried people. Um, I don't suppose it'll drive us bankrupt, I don't suppose it'll drive us under, but it will have a tremendous effect on our income. There is no cure for new variant CJD. Scientists believe that the most infectious part of a cow is the brain and spinal cord tissue, which may have been used in sausage, ground beef, and meat pies. Those parts are no longer used in food products. Cow flesh, blood, and milk have never been found to contain mad cow disease, but critics point out that those tests aren't definitive. Logic suggests that millions of Britons ingested the infected meat, not just those who died. 
there has been genetic testing which suggests that some individuals are more genetically susceptible to prion diseases than others. When news of the connection between mad cow disease and new variant CJD was announced, most restaurants and fast food chains in England stopped using British meat. Many European countries banned the import of British cattle and meat, as did the United States. 50% of my business up until last week is export, either to Europe or to third countries. That was stopped last Thursday night. The rest of my business is in the UK to people like McDonald's. That has stopped overnight as well. Besides the prion theory, another is that it depends on the amount of infected meat one ingests. And no one knows why new variant CJD strikes mostly young people. One of the possible explanations is that younger people, uh, through their eating habits, they eat a lot of junk food, a lot of processed food, a lot of uh, cheaper meat cuts, that they have much greater exposure to the agent. The other possible explanation is that young people, uh, purely because they are young, are more susceptible to these agents. There have been very few cases of mad cow disease and new variant CJD in other parts of the world. To date, there have been none in the United States. The United States government has banned the practice of feeding most sheep and cow remains to cattle. And the practice has been banned in England as well, but not before more than 170,000 cows in Britain had to be destroyed. The herds have been closely monitored for any signs of BSE or mad cow disease ever since. The Churchills and the Senates no longer eat beef products, and they wonder if more could have been done to prevent the spread of mad cow disease to their children. It's going to take a long time for the scientists to know exactly what did happen and why. And why Nina died um, and why so many young people of her age group. By 1998, 25 young people in Britain had died of new variant CJD. Due to its long incubation period, scientists cannot predict how many more are destined to die. Nobody in the world yet knows whether the number of cases of new variant CJD is going to uh, fritter along at three or four a year for the next several years and then disappear, or whether these three or four cases a year for the past four or five years is the leading edge of an epidemic of unknown dimensions. Of course, it worries me very much. Um, it's impossible, I think, at this stage to, to effectively predict what's going to happen. Clearly, the idea of tens of thousands of young people suffering from such a devastating neurodegenerative disease is, is terrifying, really. We don't know how many people are going to be affected, and I think that at the moment, there is really no way of predicting it. It, it could be a large number. It could be a small number. I think any family who have have had to endure what our family has and to see a young life destroyed would find it very hard to eat beef again uh, knowing that there is no way of knowing what you're eating is safe um, and nobody can give you absolute assurance that it is now safe or will be safe in the future. So far, none of the other families, including ourselves, have had other victims in the families. There's none of them connected. So we just have to wait and see and wait for the science to give us the answers. I used to think cows were lovely animals. Uh, we had a farm in the family. We used to go there. I used to spend my summer holidays there. Steve and Helen spent their summer holidays there. We went as a family. We used to feed the calves and we used to go and stroke the cattle and the cattle have the most lovely eyes. Not now, not for me. They have haunting eyes. They have a sinister look. Because could that animal be harboring the disease? I don't know.